What's up, guys? This is Ben. You know, I got practical junk. I like taking junk and turning into stuff that's usable. You know, I've been raising quail like many other people, and uh, I'm blessed, to, you know, to have the knowledge to frame and, you know, be creative. Uh, a lot of people can't imagine something and picture it and do it. You know, I started out, I built my first junk coop, my hoop coop. That's this beautiful thing right here. Um, works amazing. A little bit taller than I should have built it, but my birds are really calm. They fly up. I, I've been lucky. I haven't had, but, you know, I haven't really had a lot of quail die in it. Um, very secure. Did all my research. Got an electric fence right here around the bottom. Then made my second coop. That's this one right here. Um, both these lids got little actuators. They lift up, very secure, never had a predator problem. Um, but I put a lot of thought into them. Then I picked up a chicken coop. Somebody had, they bought it. It was a tractor supply one. Would not recommend buying one of these coops. But again, people have to buy them. People don't have the skills, not down anybody, to be able to build something from scratch. Um, but I, I got this, it was free, it's an amazing coop, you see it? You know, I had to fully remodel it. Cut the bottom out, put treated wood in the bottom. I raised the door so that when I opened the door, the quail couldn't just run out of it. Um, modified this, you know, it's got a double ramp in there. Got rid of the door on the end. Um, you know, I've done a lot of work to it. I added a giant door down here so I could get under the box, clean it, get to the eggs. And today I'm thinking about predator proofing. My first two coops are really predator proof. You know, I kind of worked on this coop on and off and it's so easy to forget to properly predator proof your, your pen. Um, I seen somebody today post, they lost several of their birds. They just got them. You know, where I live at, there's everything here you could think of besides bears and wolves. There's only two things I don't have that want to eat these birds. Uh, I've walked out. I've caught coyotes walking around them. I've found owls trying to get past the electric fence. I've come outside and watched a hawk. Because I have those two pins side by side over there. And there's an electric fence between both of them. The hawk flew between trying to get to the birds. Got that electric fence. He didn't last long. And, and I don't like seeing animals get hurt. But you've got to protect your livestock. So today I'm out here and I'm looking at my coops. I realize my first two, they're really, they're really predator proof. Really tight, really sound. Then I realize this one. I get to looking over it. And let me show you some of the things where I made mistakes, I missed, and I didn't even realize it until I went today to take a double look at it. First, looks great, looks secure. It is not. First thing that I realized today, is you see right up here? N never even noticed this. Didn't think about it. Because I, I, I didn't frame it up. This was pre-built. Look at this. I could stick my, I've got big hands. I could stick my hand underneath there. That, that's a big problem. I'm very lucky I have not had rats get in here. So that, we're gonna have to strip some wood down. We're gonna get that buttoned up. Then, the wire, I, I redid this end. Then I look at it. I broke my rule. Staple here, staple in the middle. You know what I forgot to do? Put a staple here. Let me show you something. I can get my fingers in between that. If I can get my fingers in between that, an animal can get in. So I've got to button up. I've got to button that up. And I probably got sidetracked and forgot. But now that I've added this run, which is a second coop, anything can hop up on top and get up in there. So that's an issue. And I get to looking more. Everything else is pretty well stout. And then I get over here where I raise the door up right here. Yeah, it looks secure. But look here. 
I didn't put staples in the middle. Anything can, if something's small enough, it can get under this electric fence and it can get in here. That's a big problem. Then, as I nitpick my own coop here, my electric fence. It starts out great over here. It's right, right off the ground. Then, as I raise the ground to level it out well, it's getting higher, it's getting higher, it's getting higher. Well, when I put this together, you know, I, I measured the coop, put that on. You know, I put my electric fence together. Man, anything can crawl under this. Right here, anything can get up here. The first thing I want them to do when an animal comes up is to touch this. So this is, needs to be lowered to the very bottom of that coop. Over here, without shocking myself, I made these so they could lift up and down. So that's okay. And then when you get on the back, it's the same thing. Something can easily get under that. And I built this coop a couple of months ago, or this extension. And if you notice my brick, I didn't pack this down good enough. Something can easily pull that down and get right in there. So, these are things that I've done. All right, my Katrika of my own setup made a few mistakes. How did I make these mistakes? I missed a lot of those staples. You know what happened? I only had a few left, and I basically was just getting everything, you know, set up there. I need to go buy some more. Guess what? When I got them, I forgot to come back and add the staples. So, made a lot of mistakes here, which were easily avoided. It could have been easily, easily avoided. My wire, didn't even think about it. Put it up there. Oh, it's good. Really silly things we can overlook can cause us a lot of problems. You know, I'm actually wanting to build my next grow out pen. I want to build it up off the ground. Um, I don't, you know, I love turning the bedding, but you know, say if I have a hundred birds in there, I'm going to be turning the bedding every single day. I don't want to do that. So my next, <laughs> my next project's going to be another pen. And then today I seen somebody that had a pen off the ground, the animals get up underneath it. That really inspired me to come out here and reevaluate. I mean, completely my own setup, which I'm happy I did because I would have come out here one day would have took one smart little critter to get in and kill my birds and eat them. So, when I build my elevated pen, you know, it gets me to thinking. I've seen a lot of other people's setups. What am I going to do? Build my pen. I'm going to use my 19-gauge hardware cloth. I'm still debating on what kind of hardware cloth I want to put on the floor. I'm going to look into getting the coated wire. But then, the bottom, underneath, animals can get underneath it. In my head, I'm thinking, I'm going to run my electric fence right on the bottom of the actual cage itself, run around. Then I'm going to run the electric fence up and down the legs. Then I'm going to run it off the ground three inches. So it's going to be a lot of electric fence around my pen. But then I'm like, you know, what if something hops over it? You know, somehow gets underneath. I'm thinking to myself, well, that 19-gauge hardware cloth, or if I even do get a little bit thicker, if something gets under there, they can still get to my animals. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, I could box in with a 2 by 4 about 2 to 4 inches below my actual pen and underneath. So I'm going to box it in. Then I'm going to make a shelf, or essentially another floor. But what I'm going to do to keep the bigger predators off from getting under there and eating it up is I'm going to use some of this really heavy wire. And I'm going to make it on a tray I can slide it in and out, and it locks into place. And it's going to be spaced that much from the floor, because I'm going to put a 2 by 4 around it. It's actually going to be spaced more than that with the actual floor of the pen. And then with that 2 by 4 it's going to make a gap there. Um, 
but I'm gonna put another th set of wire that's easy for the poop to go through, and it's gonna stop larger animals from getting under there. Hopefully the electric fence wrapping around the legs and it being, you know, up high and down low, it'll keep smaller animals from trying to climb up there. Um, you know, th there's a lot of options. And even I, you know, when I'm building a new setup, I want to think those things through. You know, I want to make sure all my hardware cloth, I want the staples, and I do mean heavy gauge staples. I want them about three to four inches apart. That doesn't leave, and you got to stretch it, make sure it's tight. These are the staples I use. They're heavy staple, hand staples. Um, I don't have a fancy, you know, staple gun. Should have bought one when I first started. It would have made it a lot easier, but think things through. You know, think about rats, think about minks, think about skunks, think about raccoons, which are very, very intelligent. They're very smart animals. Um, foxes, well, very intelligent animals. You know, people downplay how intelligent some animals are. I've, I've, I've seen raccoons get into stuff I couldn't imagine. Um, ground it out. I ground my wire. Um, I actually have a uh, grounding rod right here in the ground for my electric fence. Then I have a wire running off the cage of the actual pen itself. And I make sure all that stuff's tied in so... When the animal touches the electric fence, does, sometimes it doesn't initially shock you, but if they're touching that and they go to touch the wire, it hurts. I, my left hand has found that out a couple of times after I grounded the wiring out. It made a big difference. So think things through. Even me, I've built a couple of pins. As you can see in my, me trying to complete this one, I worked on it for a couple of months. I missed a few things. It, it was very easy for me to miss. Um, even as I'm sitting here looking at it, I've got these little sliders. Raccoon can easily get that open. So I'm going to get some of those little S clips and I'm going to run them right. I'm going to clip them through here because I've got one, two, I've got four of those. Silly things. I'm reusing the hardware. Raccoon, if he climbs up there, he's popping that door right open and your birds are gonna be gone. So make sure your pen is secure. You know, even looking at that hardware, I'm probably gonna end up changing that. I'm, I'm gonna change the hardware on it. It's so easy to overlook things. And I'm emphasizing this because if you're gonna be raising animals and you even in an urban sub, or suburban area, there's a lot of animals people do not realize that live in their area even suburban areas you have raccoons you have possums you have foxes you have coyotes i've seen them in suburban areas and when they start smelling these guys they're going to come looking for them and you want to make sure your pens are secure um a lot of times people they they don't realize oh i'm comfortable i'm in a suburban area nothing's going to be coming in here well you get cats cats will eat them up they will find a way but guys, I hope this helps somebody out. I am going to go ahead. I'm going to get some staples, button up my hardware cloth. I'm going to have to get the table saw out. I'm going to rip some wood down, stain it. I'm going to fill in all of the holes in my roofing area. Uh, Got to pull this electric fence off, lower it. And then I'm going to keep looking. You know, I, I've been very lucky so far, and I don't want to miss something silly that's going to cost me a lot of money in poultry or game birds. So I hope this helps anybody, gives you some ideas, what you can be looking at, what you got to pay attention to, to properly predator proof your setups and your pens. Uh, thanks guys. Thank you for watching Practical Junk. I really hope this helps someone out. Like, subscribe. I'm always trying to make videos to help people where I was helped and blessed to be given the information to do what I've done. Thank you. Have a blessed day.